Imagine a cosmic monster that can form in less than one second after the Big Bang and could be the key to solving the mystery of dark matter. Imagine another cosmic monster that can grow to millions or billions of times the mass of the Sun and can shape the destiny of entire galaxies. Now imagine that these monsters are so massive and powerful that they can devour stars, planets, and even light itself. These monsters are called black holes, and they are one of the most fascinating and enigmatic objects in the cosmos. But how did these black holes form in the first place? When did they appear? And how did they become so dominant and influential? These are some of the questions that scientists have been trying to answer for decades, using various theories, models, simulations, and observations. And now, thanks to some of the latest discoveries and breakthroughs from different telescopes, including the James Webb Space Telescope, we may be closer than ever to solving this cosmic mystery. In this video, we will explore some of the fascinating topics about the first formation of black holes in the universe. We will discuss two main types of black holes, primordial black holes, which could have formed in the very early universe, less than one second after the Big Bang, and supermassive black holes, which could have formed in the early universe from heavy seeds that collapsed directly from gas clouds. We will also show you some of the recent discoveries and observations that shed light on their origin and growth, using various telescopes such as JWST, Chandra, Hubble, and ALMA. We will also highlight some of the controversies and challenges that surround this topic, and how they could affect our view of the origin and evolution of black holes and galaxies. So buckle up, and get ready for a journey into the dark and mysterious world of black holes. One of the most mysterious and exciting questions in cosmology is what happened in the first moments of the universe, right after the Big Bang. Well, you might be surprised to learn that some of the most mysterious and elusive objects in the cosmos could have been born in that very instant. These objects are called primordial black holes, and they are the first type of black holes that we will talk about in this video. Primordial black holes are hypothetical black holes that could have formed in the very early universe, when it was extremely hot, dense, and filled with radiation. You see, the universe was not smooth and uniform back then, but had tiny fluctuations in the density of matter and energy. These fluctuations were like seeds that could grow into larger structures, such as stars and galaxies. But some of these fluctuations were so dense that they collapsed into black holes before they could form anything else. These black holes could have a wide range of masses from as small as an atom to as large as a planet, depending on the size and duration of the fluctuations. But why do we care about these primordial black holes? Well, because they could be responsible for some of the mysterious phenomena observed in the cosmos, such as dark matter, gravitational waves, and gamma ray bursts. Dark matter is one of the biggest puzzles in modern physics. It is a type of matter that does not interact with light or ordinary matter, but dominates the mass of the universe. We know it exists because we can see its gravitational effects on galaxies and clusters of galaxies, but we don't know what it is made of or how it was created. Some scientists believe that primordial black holes could make up part or all of the dark matter in the universe. If this is true, then we could detect them by looking for their gravitational lensing effects on distant stars or galaxies. Gravitational lensing is a phenomenon where light is bent by a massive object in its path creating distorted or multiple images of the source. By measuring these effects, we could estimate the mass and location of the primordial black holes. Another way to detect primordial black holes is by using gravitational waves. These are ripples in space-time that are produced by accelerating masses. They can travel across the universe at the speed of light, carrying information about their sources. One of the most powerful sources of gravitational waves is black hole mergers. When two black holes collide and merge into a larger one, they release enormous amounts of energy and gravitational waves. These waves can be detected by special observatories on Earth, such as LIGO and Virgo. These observatories have already detected several gravitational waves from black hole mergers since 2015, opening a new window into the universe. Some of these mergers could involve primordial black holes, either with each other or with other types of black holes. Another possible signature of primordial black holes is gamma rays. These are flashes of high-energy radiation that can last from a few milliseconds to several minutes. 
They are among the most energetic events in the universe and can be detected by satellites in orbit, such as Fermi. Some gamma-ray bursts could be caused by primordial black holes when they evaporate due to a process called Hawking radiation. Hawking radiation is a phenomenon where black holes emit particles and lose mass over time. This process is very slow for large black holes, but very fast for small ones. When a primordial black hole reaches a critical size, it could explode in a burst of gamma rays. So, as you can see, primordial black holes are very intriguing and important for our understanding of the universe. Now that we have learned about the primordial black holes, let's move on to the other type of black holes that we will talk about in this video. Supermassive black holes. These are the cosmic monsters that lurk at the centers of most galaxies, including our own Milky Way. They have masses of millions or billions of times that of the Sun and can swallow anything that comes too close to them, even light itself. They are also the engines that power some of the most spectacular phenomena in the universe, such as quasars, jets, and winds. They are the supermassive black holes, and they are the ultimate rulers of their domains. But how did these supermassive black holes form in the first place? When did they appear, and how did they become so dominant and influential? These are some of the questions that scientists have been trying to answer for decades using various theories, models, simulations, and observations. And one of the main challenges is to explain how they grew so large so fast in the early universe when there was not enough time for them to accrete matter at a normal rate. One possible scenario is that some of the initial seeds of supermassive black holes were actually heavy black holes with masses of about 10 to the power of 5 solar masses that formed via the direct collapse of massive gas clouds in the early universe. These heavy seeds could then grow faster and more efficiently than lighter seeds, with masses of about 10 to the power of 2 solar masses that formed from the remnants of massive stars. But how can we test this scenario? How can we observe these supermassive black holes in the early universe and measure their masses and properties? Well, this is where some of the latest discoveries and breakthroughs from different telescopes come in handy. These telescopes can detect different wavelengths of light emitted by supermassive black holes and their host galaxies, which can reveal a lot of information about their origin and growth. To observe these supermassive black holes in the early universe, we can use different telescopes that can detect different wavelengths of light emitted by them and their host galaxies. For example, JWST can detect infrared light that is red-shifted due to the expansion of the universe, and measure how far away and how old the objects are. Chandra can detect X-ray light that reveals how much matter is falling into the black hole and how fast it is spinning. Hubble can detect visible light that shows the shapes and sizes of the objects and how many and what types of stars they have. ALMA can detect radio light that indicates the gas and dust content of the objects and how they are distributed and moving. By combining these different types of light, we can get a more complete picture of these cosmic monsters and their environments. One of the recent discoveries that supports the scenario of heavy black hole seeds is the observation of a massive black hole, with a mass of about 9x10 to the power of 6 solar masses, in a galaxy called UHZ-1, which existed just over 570 million years after the Big Bang. This black hole was detected by James Webb and Chandra, and it is much more massive than what would be expected from a light seed. This suggests that it formed from a heavy seed that collapsed directly from a gas cloud and then grew rapidly by accreting matter from its surroundings. But how does this discovery compare to other observations of supermassive black holes in the early universe? And what are some of the implications and challenges of this discovery? Let's find out in the next section. As you can see, this topic is not as simple and straightforward as it may seem. There are still many mysteries and challenges that we need to solve and overcome to fully understand these cosmic monsters and their role in the universe. Some of the questions and issues that we need to address are, how common and abundant are primordial black holes in the universe? How can we detect them more reliably and accurately? How do they affect the structure and dynamics of the universe at different scales? Primordial black holes are very hard to find because they are very small and emit very little radiation. They can only be spotted indirectly by looking for their gravitational effects on other objects. But these effects are very subtle 
and can be easily confused with other sources of noise or error. So we need better and smarter instruments and methods to confirm or rule out the existence of primordial black holes. We also need to know how primordial black holes affect the universe at different scales, from the smallest quantum fluctuations to the largest cosmic structures. For example, primordial black holes could change the density and temperature of the cosmic microwave background, which is the oldest light in the universe. They could also influence the formation and distribution of galaxies and clusters of galaxies by acting as seeds or sinks of matter. How robust and realistic are the models and simulations of supermassive black hole formation and growth? How sensitive are they to the initial conditions and assumptions? How well do they match the observations and data? Supermassive black hole formation and growth are very complex and non-linear processes that involve many physical and astrophysical factors, such as gravity, gas dynamics, radiation, feedback, star formation, galaxy mergers, etc. So we need sophisticated models and simulations to capture these processes and predict their outcomes. But these models and simulations have many uncertainties and limitations, such as the choice of initial conditions, parameters, resolution, algorithms, etc. So we need to test and validate these models and simulations against the observations and data and check their consistency and accuracy. We also need to explore different scenarios and possibilities and compare their predictions and implications. How do supermassive black holes influence the formation and evolution of galaxies? How do they regulate the star formation rate, the gas inflow and outflow, and the feedback processes? How do they shape the morphology and kinematics of galaxies? Supermassive black holes are not isolated objects, but are intimately connected to their host galaxies. They can have a profound impact on the formation and evolution of galaxies by affecting the amount and distribution of matter and energy in them. For example, supermassive black holes can regulate the star formation rate in galaxies by either enhancing or suppressing it, depending on the balance between the gas inflow and outflow and the feedback processes. Feedback processes are mechanisms where supermassive black holes inject energy and momentum into their surroundings by emitting radiation, jets, or winds. These processes can heat up, blow away, or enrich the gas and dust in galaxies and affect their ability to form stars. Supermassive black holes can also shape the morphology and kinematics of galaxies by influencing their size, shape, rotation, and velocity. How do supermassive black holes interact with each other and with other black holes? How often do they merge or collide? How do they produce gravitational waves and other signals that can be detected by current or future observatories? Supermassive black holes are not static objects, but are dynamic ones. They can move around, orbit each other, and merge or collide with each other or with other black holes. These interactions can have significant consequences for both the black holes themselves and their environment. For example, when two supermassive black holes merge or collide, they create a larger and more powerful one that can affect its host galaxy more strongly. They also produce gravitational waves and other signals that can be detected by current or future observatories. These signals can provide valuable information about the properties and origins of the black holes, as well as test our theories of gravity, cosmology, and astrophysics. These questions and issues are important for advancing our knowledge of the origin and evolution of black holes and galaxies, as well as testing our theories of gravity, cosmology, and astrophysics. They also have implications for our understanding of the nature and history of the universe, as well as our place in it. So, there is still a lot to learn and discover about these cosmic monsters and their role in the universe. And we are lucky to have some of the most advanced and powerful telescopes to help us in this quest. But we also need to keep an open mind and a critical eye, and be ready to revise and update our views and theories as new evidence and data emerge. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed it and learned something new about these cosmic monsters that fascinate us so much. I also hope you have realized how complex and mysterious this topic is and how many questions and issues remain to be answered. I invite you to ask questions or share your opinions on this topic. See you next time.